Hey guys, XH here with some tips to help you become a god in dungeons, get into good parties, and carry your friends. Or make some if you don't have any. Before getting into the rest of this video, I want to thank my subscribers for getting me all the way to 3k. If you're still part of the 92% who aren't subscribed yet, you totally should. As always, please drop a like for the algorithm if you enjoyed this video. It helps out a ton. Also, I've been thinking about streaming to give you guys more interaction. You should go to my community tab and let me know if I should or shouldn't stream on the poll. Tip 5. Never ever skip a puzzle or a trap. These are the orange and pink 1x1 rooms. Why? Because if you do, you will slow down the run and possibly even cost the team SRS+. Plus. Nobody enjoys doing these rooms, but they all have to be done in order to get a good score on the run. If you open it and run away, someone else has to come take care of it later, while the rest of the party waits. And this is very annoying and a waste of time. Instead, either do the room, or if you really can't, ask someone to come show you how it's done, so you know next time. The preferred method among tryhards is for all team members to spread out. Everyone spreads out in different directions, starting from the entrance to the dungeon, and clears rooms until they hit a dead end, where they can't go any further. Then, they start doing secrets in that room, or the puzzle if it's a puzzle room. Tryhards hate it the most when there is someone else in the room with them, and this is called room stacking. Room stacking makes the run slower and you should always avoid this by not being in the same room as someone else unless they want help. The run goes the fastest when all 5 players are clearing their own separate rooms instead of going through the same room and wasting time. Tip 4. Know the strategy before you go in the boss room. This is one of the biggest reasons runs go from a perfect S plus to an epic fail. Someone goes in and messes up in the boss room, getting everybody killed, and then you fail the run. If you haven't done the floor before, then please ask your team what the strat is. Tell them you don't know, and they can tell you. It's better than failing. Don't cause team wipe NP to spend. Just ask for the strat, or if you're really shy, you can look it up. This is really important in higher floors, where one mistake can literally cause the entire run to fail. I'll cover a few quick strats really quickly. For floor 3, you have to kill all the guardians at the same time, or else they revive. For floor 4, you should put decoys in the rooftop area and camp there. For floor 5, check the color of the roof for the right livid. For floor 6, wait the golems during terracotta phase, not before, otherwise you waste too much time. Tip 3. Help check that everything is done before going in. If you're going for S rank, make sure all puzzles are done and that you have most secrets as well as trap. If you want S+, you should have every room green checked and trap complete. Don't forget to give 5 crypts for the maximum bonus score. Also, if you're in F6 or 7, make sure you kill the mimic for 2 bonus points. If you're near the blood room, please ask before you go in, and if you're in the room that is not done, please tell your team to come help you. Don't waste a good S plus run by accidentally forgetting to do one room and throwing. Tip 2. Don't die, at least not too much. Each death causes a penalty to your score, and if there are too many deaths, it's not possible to get SRS plus. Each death costs your team 2 points. You can use the legendary spirit pet to recover 1 point on the first death, but don't count on it because it only works when the person that dies has the pet. You can't really count on this in random parties. So, the most you can die and achieve S plus with is 2 times on F5 and below, and 3 times on F6 and F7 because of the mimic bonus. These are the same for master mode. If the spirit pet perk activates, you can die one more time, but the person who dies must have the pet. Also, if you're in need of a boost, try grabbing a dungeon pot. These give you a little boost of every stat, including health regeneration, defense, and speed. It's good for staying alive and running from scary shadow assassins. Tip 1. Prepare your gear and raise your level. Half of being good at dungeons is skill, the other half is having the right gear and catacombs level. Having only one without the other won't do you any good, you have to have both. Following the tips in this video will give you the knowledge you need to join a good party and carry your weight, but you still have to grind a little or all the knowledge in the world won't save you from being one tapped. There is no exact catacombs level you should have for every floor, but I'll talk a bit about my own experiences, the level I started each floor at, and the gear I had. So, floor 1 you can obviously get started on right away. I wasn't even doing it in dungeon gear at the start. I think I used like Wise Dragon and a Frozen Scythe. After doing a few floor 1s, you can start doing floor 2, using the drops you got from floor 1. For floor 3, you're probably going to want at least catacombs level 10, and you might want to buy some zombie soldier armor, which is now cheaper than when I started. Floor 4 I started doing when I was about catacombs 15. Zombie soldier or adapter are both pretty good. Floor 5 is when it starts to get hard, and you have to really make sure you're ready. I was about catacombs 20, and used adaptive armor and a yeti sword for my first completion. Floor 6 is even harder. 
I think Catacombs 25 is the earliest you should start doing it. You'll want Shadow Assassin and a tank pet like the Blue Whale or the Baby Yeti to survive the boss. I beat my first 4-7 with full Shadow Assassin and Boomerangs at about Catacombs 30. Now is probably a good time to talk about dungeon carries. I just shared with you what gear I used and how I did all my floors, but I am someone who never bought dungeon carry. However, I have done many carries and I noticed a way that some players prefer to skip the higher floors. If you buy carries, I'm not hating on you, but on average, players who skip progression by buying carries don't have as much game knowledge as others. Whether you progress yourself or buy carries, you will be okay and join good parties without being kicked as long as you remember the tips in this video. Remember that practicing is perfect, and you may want to come back to check on this video in a few days if you need a refresher. Good luck!